It's time for some furballs today. We're going to draw the environment that the furballs live in. Now this will be fun because we'll use value and we'll pile the containers up behind the furballs in the underground so they have a place to live. Now I'm starting on the ladder entrance right here to the underground. The planetscape where the unibears live is right up here. Here's their entrance right here. That's where they walk into the ladder and into the ender planet. They climb down this long ladder. And they have to jump over a spot there because the ladder's real old and some of the pieces have fell out. And then they climb down the last rung. And then there's one more rung down here. And then they go inside this entrance into the pile of containers. Now this will be a really interesting living environment. I'm drawing a four short and square, and I've already penciled in my line so you can see where I'm drawing. I've mapped it out. It's a good idea if you're going to be darkening in your drawings with pen or with ink to do that, to map it in, give you a, a, a kind of an idea of what's happening in your drawing, a, a road map to follow. Now I'll pile the containers. I'll start right here with the four short and circle behind the furballs, and I'll draw slanting down. Now here's a trick. This is going to be part of the value. I'll highlight the four furballs right here by not drawing all the lines just coming down into here. I'm going to kind of fade out the sketch behind here. So this is kind of in a white glow back behind the furballs and all the detail will come around. So your eye knows that the buildings go back behind the furballs, but it won't confuse you. It won't make the furballs look like they're just part of a big mess of lines. So I'll just draw parts of the buildings and they'll blend down naturally as I continue on. You'll see as we go along. That's your sense of eye, your sense of judgment you're, you develop with your art eye. If it will be too busy or not. Finish that hand. And I'm just throwing some boxes up here. Tilting some to the right, some to the left. Some slanting towards you like this box right here. Some slanting away from you. Some four shortened circles. Some four shortened squares. Coming straight down. They're all connected together. Some four shortened squares here. Now that I'm past the furballs, I'll go ahead and take these boxes all the way down to the ground right here. This box is slanting clear out here. Look at that. And then look at this. I'll put some four shortened circles over here slanting away. And some four shortened circle or squares tilted away from you. And then look at this. A four shortened circle tilting away from you. It's like a tube, the distance of the back part of a tube. This is so fun. Get to create some kind of space where all the furballs live. You know, these little boxes and containers that I'm turning into buildings are the inhabitants for the furballs. Now, other artists use different ideas and different forms to build structures. Now, let's see what this artist's idea of a structure is. <laughs> If you visit your local art museum or your school library or your art books, you get lots and lots, tons of ideas for your own drawings, just like my secret city up here. I hope I'm giving you some ideas for your cities, aren't I? Different shapes of trees and animals and buildings and whew, rocket ships. Now, I'll add some more foreshorts and circles up here. Piling my containers up. See, this is so fun. I'll probably, I'll be doing this for a million hours. No, I'm just joking. But I like drawing a lot. When I get a good idea, I keep going and going and going and stretching all the way out. There's another four short and circle. I hope you're practicing your drawing every day. If you draw every day, 20 or 30 minutes, you'll, you know, actually, you'll probably end up drawing for more than 20 or 30 minutes because once you start drawing, you get into that drawing mood and you don't want to stop. Okay, now you know what I'll do is I'll use some balance here and draw some shapes coming off here. Just carefully balance on the side or the corner. I'll draw a four short and square here. It's balancing on the side. See how it's a pile of containers balancing? 
Hi, Cindy. You know, this is so much better than the other scarf you had. See, it so has so much more punch to it, so much more pizzazz. <laughs> they don't put these on their pets, do they? <laughs> this is great. Is this for me? Will you make me one later on? Thanks, Cindy. Wait, you have to move it out of the way so I can shade a little better. You gonna watch me shade? I'm gonna add some value to my drawings right now. Take the pen. This is shading. And then I'll value in the right side. Look, I'll put a light tone of value on the right side. Shade the left side. Really dark. And then I'll add some value. See, it makes the boxes look a little more three-dimensional. Nice and dark. And I'll graduate the value with shading. Nice and dark over here. And use value. See, it sets the shapes apart from each other, helps the shapes look take form, make them look more three-dimensional. Oh, thank you. You you can't live in here though, Cindy. You live in the Green Mountains. These, this is for the furbles. I bet they wouldn't mind if you visited though sometimes. <laughs> Shading on the left side, and then I'll draw. How about some, some stripes here to give the idea some value? And then I'll use a solid darkness, a solid black over here. And I'll use polka dots on the right side to give the idea of some value. See, different values on all the shapes. I'll show you the side over here and add some value on the other side. Use value in your drawings. Draw, draw, draw. Stay in a super positive attitude. And I'll see you next time.